Hello! How's it going everybody? I decided to take you guys on a walk today. Um, yeah, I'm a little out of breath. Um, I was gone all weekend up helping my aunt and uncle at my grandma's house and so did not do a thing except remove boxes and really heavy things in my grandpa's shop. So I thought I'd start the morning taking a walk and I thought I'd take you with me. So hello, hello, thanks for joining me. Uh, I wonder how you're doing. It's kind of cold and brisk here. Uh, Courtney, how's it going, girl? You're the first one I see on. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, and Valerie and Trisha, thanks for joining me. So fun. Um, this is my little neighborhood here. Kind of live out in the country. Oh, you can see like a red barn right there. Yeah, there's a red barn. Yeah, so this is my little... It's kind of right up the street from my house. I have really bad reception at my house, so I gotta walk over the hill to uh, to uh, get anything for you to actually hear me. So um, here I am, my little neighborhood. Um, and thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, all of you, oh my goodness, Mandy and Mary Beth and Valerie and Kathy and Angela and Melissa and Connie and Jane and Missy and Dorothy and Esther. Thank you guys for hanging out and Margaret. Anyway, here I am um, hanging out with you. I got home pretty late last night um, on the way home. So I took a trip with my daughter. We went up to help grandma at grandma's house and just got to look through so many things of my grandma and my grandpa and just like the funny things too. My grandma was like almost 94. So um, it was funny, not Monday, yes, Sunday, we were going through a bunch of stuff. We got the kitchen all packed up and then we went into the laundry room and I'm so laughing at her cleaning supplies cupboard because there were probably six bottles of those spray bottles of ammonia and water. <laughs> I thought, Grandma, I don't think you need any more of these bottles. <laughs> anyway, so it was a good weekend, really fun to hang out with my aunt and just talk and yak and my uncle. So it was super fun. So we had a good time. Um, my daughter had a good time too. So it was kind of our little girls work weekend and it was awesome. So yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I got home late last night. On the way home, we stopped and saw Mo and the puppies and they are getting so big and so cute. Um, I'm gonna have to post, uh, my daughter took a couple videos, so I'll have to post a video for you guys to see or a couple pictures, but they are adorable. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, and Mo gets to come home on Friday. So we're all very excited for Mo to come home and relax and be in puppy heaven or, you know, mom dog heaven. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, let's see. I got home late last night and opened up a prairie devotional and was like, what am I talking about tomorrow? <laughs> you know, nothing like being prepared, right? So I open it up and it's like one of my favorite, one of my favorite chapters. And it's so easy for me to talk about. And it's so easy for me to encourage you to do this. So um, it is chapter 22 from the legendary Sweet 16 episode. Um, <clears throat> this is when um, Laura and Almanzo are falling in love. And, and uh, when Almanzo asks Charles for Laura's hand and he says no. And then Laura's crying on the bed, which I just think is the funniest thing because... She's crying on the bed, just weeping like she did when she was 12, you know, and just saying like, well, what happens if he doesn't love me if, if we have to wait longer, you know, and um, it's so great because Carolyn is like the wise mother and this quote she says is just gold, right? It says, you 
just be you, Laura Ingalls. Apparently, that's what he liked in the first place. Um, don't we t tend to try and change who we are to please the people around us? Like, man, you know? So let me read this and then we'll talk about it. It says, Oftentimes we may try to be someone we aren't, which is like wearing a friend's shoes that are two sizes too small or too big. In this episode, Carolyn reminds her daughter to be herself. It's the only sensible way to live. During our few, first few days on the set of Little House, my mom tried to keep my sister and me from crying on camera. Michael Lannon pulled her aside to ease her mind. I don't know who Baby Grace is, and you don't know who Baby Grace is. Let's let Wendy and Brenda figure it out. Michael wanted Baby Grace to be herself. It's the only practical way to create a character for television and less stressful too. In real life, being anything different from who God created you to be is extremely hard work. All that effort is wasted because ultimately, we can never authentically be anything but ourselves. The creator of the world knew what he was doing when he made you and me. He wants each of us to be the person he designed. We forget that Father God is a master artist. He doesn't make mistakes. Laura needed to hear it, and so do we. And the verse is from Isaiah 64, 8. Oh, let's see if I can turn that. And it says, God, you are our father, we're the clay, and you're our potter. All of us are what you made us. All right, so I can't imagine having little children on a television show and wanting them to do something and then getting really frustrated because they don't. Because anybody who's a parent knows that whatever you want your kid to do, they kind of do the opposite. <laughs> and so I can imagine you have to let this character kind of become whoever it is that they become. And I, Michael Anna knew that. And that is just brilliant. Um, but also like just makes common sense, you know? Um, when I was growing up, you know, it was so funny. I didn't really realize this until um, in November when I was in South Dakota for that women's retreat. And, and we had such a good time. But you know when you do something like that, they have those like icebreaker questions. Okay, so there's this icebreaker question. And Courtney and Hannah will remember this because they were there. Um, and they're going around introducing yourself and then saying, the question was, what did you want to be when you grew up? And did you become that? Okay, pretty easy question. You'd think that everybody kind of had like a dream of what they wanted to be, right? So we're going all the way around the room and people wanted to be teachers and nurses and moms and scientists and doctors and, you know, all the things they wanted to be. And it kept going around and around and around. And I'm sitting here racking my brain. And I'm sitting here going, goodness sakes, I don't know what I want it to be. And then all of a sudden, it came to me. And I was actually the very last person, which was kind of, I think, a, a letdown. Because I didn't have a really good answer. And I said, you know, the only thing that I ever remember wanting to be was Brenda. How sad. I'm like almost embarrassed to say that I didn't have dreams for myself because I just wanted to be her. I, what a shame, right? And then I realized not, not incredibly long ago, you know, probably around the time that I'm writing this exact devotional that we read today is that God created me to be me. And you got to get to that point. I had to get to that point where I was going to embrace that. And you know, in the last couple years, I don't know if you guys are on the whole Enneagram kick, but I have learned so much about myself 
taking that like inventory and learning what number I am or what number I think I am. And it has totally helped me realize that for so long of my life, I was trying to be Brenda's number. And I'm not made to be Brenda's number. I'm made to be Wendy, who is really a seven. And I don't know if you know the Enneagrams, but a seven is very spontaneous. A seven is always looking forward to the next trip, the next event, the next girls weekend, the next weekend to help grandma. Like I am, that's me. And I am the most alive when I am not pinned down to one thing, when I am not in a spot where I have to be driven and performing, that is not a good place for me. And I think um, when I tried to be Brenda my whole life, I never felt good about myself. But when I've learned to actually be myself, I'm so much more happy <laughs> because I'm doing and being exactly who God created me to be. Sorry, a big truck just went by. Hope you could hear that. Anyway, so I am encouraging you today, just be you. Don't try to be anyone else because when you do, it doesn't work out and you don't have any joy or any peace to be able to live this life that you were created to live. So that's me today. I'm encouraging you to just be you. And um, I hope you're having a great day. And if you don't remember this episode, go watch Sweet 16. It's one of my favorites. And actually, I actually think it's a two-parter, isn't it? Re remind me. Yes, I think it's a two-parter. Um, anyway, great, great episode. And I'm going to say goodbye because I'm going to finish my walk. So hope you have a great day. I hope it's beautiful and wonderful wherever you are and you can get outside and enjoy this day and um, love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.